Good evening, my friends. Uh, I got something rather unique here to show off. Um, it's not something I normally do, but uh, this was such a unique item that I couldn't resist. Uh, a friend of mine brought me this uh, at a local event recently and asked me, what is this? And uh, I've got about um, 35 to 40 years of uh, electrical and electronic experience, and uh, I had never seen never seen anything like this before, so I didn't really know what it was. Kind of looking at it, I had, I had kind of an idea, uh, but... Uh, wasn't sure, so uh, like uh, most of us do these days, I posted some pictures on Facebook, uh, a group called uh, I Take Pictures of Electronic Parts, oddly enough, and um, got a pretty good response, and one of the first people to respond uh, figured it out right away. Uh, he, he got it with the name. I didn't uh, do a whole lot of research on the name, because actually I was out of town. I wasn't near my regular computer, so I, I just threw it out there to see what had come up. And uh, the company is uh, called uh, Manufacturers and Inventors Electric Company. Uh, this thing was built late 1800s, early 1900s. Um, the um, they used obviously they used a watch case. But presumably, obviously, plastics weren't a thing back then, and so watch case was readily available. And so I think I, I've seen multiple battery testers and meters built into old watch cases, but I've never seen anything like this. Uh, the actual name it's actually called a, a pocket telegraph sounder. Or the Morse code watch, secret sounders, a couple different names I found. Very little information online about these. There's just a couple museum pieces. Um, I hadn't seen anybody did a, did a, a video on it, so I decided to go ahead and do a video on it. I just thought it was a really cool item. Uh, it's a little bit easier if you take the back cover off to see what's going on. This, the large knob was completely jammed. He was unsure that it even turned, but there's threads on it, and so in, in being very gentle with it and working it back and forth, I finally got this this knob to turn. And what it does is it increases the gap on this, I would believe it to be called the armature in the terms of electrical devices, between these two coils. And my speculation is that the larger the gap, the more energy it would take to close this to, to pull pull it in and so the technician could probably figure out or get an idea how strong the signal strength was on the line uh, the center knob is pulling adjustable spring that goes down the middle and that spring adjusts how much tension this is this gets pulled up with again it'd be it'd be a way to measure uh, how much energy is being applied I decided to carefully uh, energize this thing I started with five volts and that um, it hit pretty hard at that so I, I immediately turned it down and I found a sweet spot of about four volts. Uh, seems to energize this thing really nicely. Uh, it seems to work really well, and we're not drawing any current to hurt anything. But uh, as you can see, it fires quite nicely. It makes a really nice little clicking sound. And uh, if you close the gap down, obviously it changes pitch a little bit uh, because it's not. Uh, and sometimes it does get stuck. I noticed. The spring, there's something in here that's kind of binding a little bit. I didn't really want to, I didn't want to spray any chemicals or anything in this thing. I really, I just, I don't want to hurt it. It's more than, it's more than a century old. So I don't, I don't want to cause any damage. There it goes. Working really well now. I didn't want to, didn't want to make anything worse on it. So I didn't want to get too carried away with it. I noticed it gets stuck a little bit with the case on there as well. But you get the idea what's going on. Really cool little device. Um, I think I said, yeah, 18, 19, or late 18, 1800s, early 1900s. These things were like $5 for the cheap one, which this, I guess this would have been considered the cheap one. There was another one that had a button on top that allowed, that presumably allowed you to send the Morse code signals. Those were $750 and upwards of $10 with the accessories, which in 1900, um, today's money, that'd be like, 175 to 400 dollars and so uh, that's even even today's money that's that's kind of an expensive uh electron or testing device back then when when wages were you know 20 cents an hour this would have been a pretty expensive device and so presumably that's why there's not a lot of them around maybe maybe it was low volume uh not a lot of people could afford it or my suspect would be as the telegraph world came to an end uh, a lot of the linemen, the technicians, uh, had these in their pockets when they went home. Uh, they've got these banana plug style connectors on the bottom, although they're quite a bit smaller. Uh, 
than a, than a true banana plug. So they're they're about the size. I don't have a test lead on my hand, but they're about the size of a, of a tip of a test typical test lead, uh, or the the end of a test lead, I should say. But yeah, pretty cool piece. I didn't see any other videos on it. Uh, there's a 355 here. That's a, presumably the model number. It says four ohms on the back, and then it's got the indentation of the M and L. M and I Electric Company. It took me a little bit to figure out that it was an E or an F. A little bit, a little hard to see, but I'll see if I can uh, post some uh, high resolution pictures as well. But uh, yeah, just a really cool little item. Uh, the the owner of this one, he actually bought it off eBay a couple months ago as an unknown item. The, the people selling it didn't know what it was, and he didn't know what it was either. But he bought it because it looked cool, and I I, I totally agree. Uh, I'm gonna have to start watching uh, more closely at uh, old pocket watches that. Uh, you know, a lot of pawn or not pawn job or uh, flea markets and uh, antique shops they have these things and they're always closed up usually. So I'm gonna have to start taking a little closer look at some of those when I see them. But yeah, kind of a cool piece of history, pretty much useless in today's today's industry, other than just being a really cool little item. My thought would be to put a little Bluetooth receiver in here or something and make it actually function again, would be kind of would be kind of a novelty to make it work, but I wouldn't. Uh, wouldn't want to hurt it either it could be done it could be done without it could be reversible but anyhow i just thought it was a really cool item and i just had to i wanted to share share with you guys anyhow have a good uh, have a good day